Hello and welcome to our third, I think this is our third tutorial. Today we are going to be discussing how to build your collection, just get your cards from the close to 0% you have coming out of the starter mission story and into a 100% full collection. So, first thing we're going to touch on, starter decks. You'll see that I've already purchased most of them and the ones that I have are actually the ones that released recently for the previous expansion. Early on, these are going to be the best bang for your buck. Not the 1,000 gold ones, but there are 500 gold ones that will get you 50 card decks. And simple math, 50 for 500 versus 75 for 1,000, you're getting a better value for the 500 gold decks. Each of the decks, we'll just look at Pactus all here, comes with a legendary and a smattering of various cards at different rarities. Like we've got Hush here. And then we've got some of the rarer. Sorry, they're epics. These are the rares. So you get some decent cards out of it. Cards that, while the deck itself may or may not be playable, we'll be working on budget versions of those decks so that it, it gives you a framework to build upon, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So you've got that framework. You get a legendary. Now's a good time to talk about legendary duplicate protection. So, let me go out of here. So let's pretend we bought that one, and now we have a Yoran the Scald King. He is a multi-attribute 5? Yeah. So, he's got the gem here. Makes him a unique legendary. You will only ever be able to run one of him in your deck. This is pretty self-explanatory. If you've tried throwing a deck together already, you already know this. But what happens if you open a pack and you pull a legendary? Will you get a Yoran the Scald King again? No. Elder Scrolls Legends has implemented, relatively recently, duplicate legendary protection. If you open a pack and would receive a legendary, it checks your collection. If it's a legendary you already have, so Yoran, or... If it's a legendary you already have three of, example, Bernie Clan Night Stalker, it will not assign you that legendary. Instead, it will search the same uh, set, Alliance War, etc., and find an, a legendary in that set that you do not have. Now, there's a couple caveats to this. Let's go over to Alduin. I have an alternate art Alduin. It's one of the festivals that you can go ahead and acquire. I'm not sure if it's still available. I think it still is. But regardless, once you get alt art Alduin, if you get alt art Alduin, you will notice here, the game doesn't believe I have Alduin. I can still receive Alduin from core, no, Skyrim. From a Skyrim class set, or class pack. So premiums. Alt Arts do not count. Same goes for Odevang. I have this fancy flaming Odevang. The game does not register that as me having a normal Odevang. And from a core pack, I could still pull an Odevang. So it is worthwhile if you're trying to expand your collection to try to keep both the premium and the non-premium, as that will force your legendaries to go to spots you don't already have them. And then likewise, if I manage to pull a premium legendary, and it says, hey, I see you've already got a Merrick, and it says, but it's a premium legendary, it'll say, well, you don't have a premium Merrick, and I can still get a premium Merrick. If you have all legendaries full up from every set, and you pull a legendary, It'll go through the logic, say, hey, you've already got them all, and it'll just assign you a random legendary that you can dust and move on. That really doesn't apply here because we're working on building our collection, not figuring out what happens, but figured it's a fact I know, so I might as well share it. So, set this back to all rarities, drop that filter. We've already discussed, at a basic level, kind of the soul gems and the gold just what they're used for, quests acquiring gold, gold used to buy packs, or, more importantly, arena tickets. Event tickets, same thing. 
So the best way when you start out to utilize your gold if you are not wanting to buy a starter deck, which I would advise you to get one, maybe two of, just so that you've got a solid core that you can take into casual or onto the ladder or into practice to just grind out some stuff. Sorry, grind out some stuff. Grind out some soul gems. So, the best bang for your buck you will achieve with your gold is solo arena early on. Now, what is the difference between solo and versus arena? Well, one, you're playing the AI. The AI has a special difficulty level known as special, where it does special plays that really nobody else would ever do. But it exists. There are, and there's a caveat to why solo arena is better than versus arena. Aside from their special level of intelligence, up until you hit rank 1, you will start at rank 9. Whenever you win 9 wins in solo arena, there are 9 various opponents you'll end up playing, and we'll start one just to kind of show that off. Once you complete 9, you will get the standard gold reward, which will be around 70, 75 gold. And you will get a rank up bonus which will have additional gold that will mostly, if not entirely, refund your starting amount. Rewards-wise, let's go back over to here, the difference between the two is Solo Arena just gets paid out half the gold that Versus Arena does. So I said 70-75, you get about 150 gold if you go 7 wins in Versus Arena. Losses don't penalize you, but 3 losses and you're out. We'll get back with this and we will end with an arena run just to kind of give you guys an idea of how you do and then show you the reward screen at the end. So, you've acquired gems. Where should you spend those gems? Well, these legendaries and any other legendary you see here in the pre-built deck screen is a legendary you can acquire with gold. Unless you absolutely need that legendary for your deck now... You should not craft it. What I advise you to do with your gems is to focus on crafting legendaries that you need for your decks and epics that you need for your decks. So let's say you... We always do Bane Lord, so why stop now? Bane Lord, not the cheapest deck, but if you're wanting to craft a Bane Lord list, and let's say you already have... I think Red Brahmin is part of the Scout 500 list, so you would already have him from gold. But you wanted to craft Bane Lords. Well, you could craft Bane Lords, but let's say you had those, and you're just like, well, I need Leaf Lurkers. You would check the gold decks, because some of them do come with Leaf Lurkers, and you might get those. Or if you wanted Moonlight Werebats, you might craft one or two of them. Or even just comments, hey, I didn't pull Drain Vitalities, and I don't want to go spend a bunch of gold on Skyrim packs. So you're going to just go ahead and load up on your, just, I think they're like 50 gems each. Craft your shouts. So I would focus on going on to Legend decks, uh, link in the description, or link below, I don't know the official YouTube terminology. Deal with it. And you'd look at what you need, and I would advise just crafting, building up a deck around whatever deck you started with. Uh, one of those starter decks, or even something you're throwing together that you liked. Don't craft premiums, I guess is the only other thing. They end up costing four times as much as crafting a normal card. And this is going to hurt me to say it. It's going to hurt me a lot. You could soul trap your premiums. Now, soul trapping a card that is premium gives you enough gems to craft any card of that rarity. So early on, when, hey, shinies are great, but you'd rather be able to play a deck, you can go through and say, hey, I've got three of these. I don't need the shiny one because I can only ever run three, and you can soul trap it. And while that's not super valuable here, once you get up to epics, and I do this somewhat with the alt arts, but here you could say, Fleeting Apparition, it cost, it cost 100 gems to get an epic. 
Oh, did they change some of the math? No, sorry. You would get 100. Sorry, it cost 400 to summon an epic. This is really just an epic of your choice. I like premiums. Premiums are one of my favorite things about this game. I like shiny cards. I am easily distracted. And see, look at that green. Is this not the best thing ever? It's shiny. But early on, when you need cards, I could see soul trapping these. Never soul trap an alt art, because you're going to end up... Well, okay, it doesn't let you. Good. Any alt art or... I think it does let you soul trap stuff from, like, Clockwork City. Yeah, anything that comes from a story like this, you will never get in a pack. Don't soul trap them. You won't get them back unless you have to go and spend the full money again. Alright. And again, that ends our public service announcement here. Let's start at that solo arena, and then we'll talk about some other things that I'm not necessarily going to show here on screen. So let's go into play, solo arena. So you could spend 150 gold, or you can get these tickets. They come as part of your daily login rewards, or what I'll start talking Welcome. about as we get going here. Welcome to the arena! Good citizens of the Empire! It just feels rude to cut that announcer off. Itch on the nose, I think I got a cat hair there. Um, we'll be discussing how to draft, possibly in a later video. Right now, at least in the... Uh, what era would it be called? The Moons of Elsewhere era? Green is extremely powerful in Arena. And my personal favorite class to draft in Arena before and after Moons of Elsewhere is Monk. So Empire gives me Monk. Plus purple. So we're going to go Presenting there. the Empire of Cyrotil. Tacticians whose conquest knows no bounds. And solo Arena, you just want lots of guards and terrain. So we're going to go just grab some two drops. A little bit of three drop. Items, good. Prophecy, great. Let's start building up our curve a little higher. Ooh. Leaf Water Blessing, we've got a little bit of drain in here, so that cycles back to your hand once you get drain. We've got three potential drains in here. Removal. I think we're going to go Spider Lair, though. I like Spider Lair. I don't have a lot of action, so we're just going to go with the cheap guard. Do I have stuff with a lot of health? I'm looking to see if we can take advantage of East Empire Crafter. But we need things with 5 health, and that's really not our thing. We'll go with the Bosmer. Another Cartel Bruiser. We'll grab a Cruel Axe, just get some extra items in here. Guard. Guard. Drain. Eh, we'll go with the charge here. Removal. Prophecy Guard. AoE removal. Corner Club Gambler for card draw. I don't think we ever take Death Lord. Both of these could be very good, because a lot of the AI will try to go wide on you. And having a way to remove that is good. The downside is this also hits my side of the board. But our win condition is Spider Lair. Or Cartel Bruiser getting out of control. Every time he goes phase, plus two, plus two. We'll go with Corner Club. Uh, removal. Prophecy removal of that. All bad. We're going to go with two, two Moons Contemplation because there's a chance that gets us some health back. Ooh, we found one of the double cards. 
I don't think I ever explained these when we were discussing collection. Now, so it's one card in your deck. It counts toward one on this number. But as soon as you draw it, it splits, and then you have two cards. You have Feldu, give a creature lethal this turn, and you have Elytra Noble, 4-6 lethal creature. We're going to go with the double card. Double cards are great in Arena. We're going to grab a Daedric Crescent. Just get some extra action. A uh, Mercenary Captain in a 4 cost 2-2 two, two, consumed to give friendly creatures plus 1 plus 1 is currently borderline broken and possibly in need of a nerf. We'll see what ends up happening with the card, but right now it's great. We take it. Guards are good. Do we want the Rebel Warden? It's a one drop. It summons 1-1 one, one recruits if it goes face. Or do we want Blessings of the Grove for health? We have plenty of drain. We don't have a lot of token. You know what? Well, both of these are good. But I don't have a lot of creatures that I want to betray, which is sacrifice a creature to play this again. So it allows us to play, give a re random creature minus two, minus two, or sorry, give a creature minus two, minus two twice. But there's not a whole lot of stuff I want to sacrifice for that. So we'll grab Rebel Warden. I absolutely love Mushroom Tower, but I don't have a lot of actions. We have three. Whereas Master of Thieves, we've got a fair bit of pilfer in here. Do we? We've got Rebel Warden, the Cartel Bruisers. I mean, I still think that's enough. Oh, we'll grab the Highwayman for card draw. That is dangerous because it cycles your deck and could discard our, our win conditions. Uh, Deepwood Trapper is a very good slowing mechanic. And we've got a lot of cheap creatures, so I think we're just going to grab Fifth Legion Trainer here at the end. So we've got a nice low curve deck, very good at stabilizing. Alright, so this is what you see when you get into Solo Arena. You've got various classes that you can play against. And you have up to three losses. Once you beat each of these subclasses, you unlock the boss. There's plenty of articles posted somewhere online. Full disclosure, I don't know where because I've never looked through them on what each of these portraits has in their deck. But I think what we're going to start with is probably the Gobbos. I mean, I'm assuming that's a goblin deck. It's got a goblin portrait. Goblins are all in green. It's a mono green deck. So we select them. We play. As you saw, I could select anyone. Mortar really doesn't matter. Who wants it more? Let's find out. Oh, so we have a special lane controls here. Controls the knowledge, controls the power. So, Solo Arena, unlike Versus Arena, has random lane effects. In this case, there is a library. If we have a creature in this lane, any of our actions cost one less. These guys are really good. But I do really want a 1 or a 2 drop, so I think we're going to throw everything back. We got a 1 drop. And I can give it lethal if I need to get a fancy trade. I'm just going to go ahead and lock that in the field everything. lane. Or sorry, in the shadow lane. The shadow library lane. Throw down another guard. He gets a free trade here, but then we can trade right back. Card advantage stays the same. Hmm. I would rather him bump this first. End of the road. We're just going to play Croc. Alright, so that's going to be the winner of a crushing blow. This goblin, whenever he plays another green creature, gets plus one, plus one. And I would rather that not happen. 
End of the yeah. So we're gonna even it out. We've got four cards, he's got four cards. Blaze out another one of those Merc Waters. This time we'll use our charge. You can outrun me. We'll give lethal. Veteran, if you remember, as soon as it survives its first attack, it's been it triggers. This is where I'm so he's now a 3-2. Don't hit it. Alright. I guess I knew he was going to hit it. He's green. So I think I would rather draw a card from this. There will be sweet for this one, so we played it on a Wayne turn, which is even number turns. Turn count six. And we're just going to remove that. Territorial Viper sitting out there. Insert one of those comments about special plays for special, special classes, special people. This one will be going. All right, so I can give somebody plus two plus two, but he's got a lot of lethal. I think I'd rather wait and have ward and guard. In the meantime, I'll let Snake chew on that. Alright, so we're probably going to throw away Black Marsh Centurion with Corner Club Gambler to try to refill our hand. So theoretically, this Go can handle both of those. Discard a card. The Mage's Guild gave this one a home. This one will never forget that. Sad Goblin. He is sad because of... He is sad because my opponent had Ransack and was able to remove my corner club. Give no quarter. This one can be conquered. Oh, apologize. I forgot to warn you guys. Screecher makes a lot of noise. Screecher is my name for Elytra Noble. Now you know why. Give no quarter. This one can be counted upon. Nothing will stop Khajiit. So this lowers or sets a creature's power to one. No real need to do that at the moment. And I don't really need to gain health on any creature, so we'll just hold. Nothing will stop Nothing will stop Khajiit. So we'll just start a slow walk forward. If he plays anything big, we do have a piercing jab. I'm gonna give you that. Slay. He's murdered a thing. So we got plus one, plus one. Yay for him. Ah, that's also why you keep goblins in check. Because that can happen. Right, so we're gonna piercing javelin this. I think I'm just gonna bone armor. We're going to look for somebody with high health. There's four, here's five, or we could draw a card and gain two health, which is actually all that's needed over here. There's our spider leg. Lethal, it still dies. If he had gotten a prophecy, we could have set its power to one. Alright, so it's time to get spider layer in play. Someone steal your sweet roll again. Nothing will Favorite stop voice line in the game, by the way. Did somebody steal your sweet roll again? Alright, so now Spider Lair can give us three different spiders. A guard spider, a lethal spider, or a web spider that shackles somebody. We got web spider, so now Goblin Skulk's not attacking next turn. We're just going to go ahead and start setting up for a mercenary captain. If you want to live, you'll move along, yes? I'll kill you where you stand. You can trust me. There's a lethal spider, so we're going to play out the Bosmer. Nothing like a good battle. So there's nothing showing up that we get any bonuses for consuming. So we're just gonna bat steak. Do we eat bat steak today? Yeah. Well, grilled lizard. 
We're gonna eat some grilled lizard. Everyone's super thrilled they ate grilled lizard. You don't scare us. Pulls a prophecy bat. That's fine. The forest. No way we can actually only break I'll one rune. So we're just front load our damage. We'll give Spooter the win. All right. So that gets us through one game. Who will join our challenge? After you complete each game in solo arena only, you are given a chance to draw a card. I think we'll grab another Moon Touched Guardian. Challenger triumphs! What challenge awaits next? Let's find out! Alright, so we're still very guard drain heavy, so I think we're okay versus aggressive decks, so we'll start with the Crusader next. Who will prevail? Our challenger has built some rudimentary defenses. <laughs> Let's see if it works. All right, so we get to start with a makeshift defenses in hand. I'm going to want that. And I might be able to get its wax ability to give the rudimentary defenses something. Spider layer is a win condition for us, but I don't think I can start with it because he's going to be very aggressive and we might just be dead by turn 7. No play from our opponent. The major skill gave this one a home. Killing this you one. will make an excellent story. Give no quarter. This one can be counted upon. I think we're gonna ring out Dunmer Tyra. See if you can it's outrun been fun. me. This is where I'm engaged. Just have a body there to Speak contest. My axe is sharp, and my patience is thin. All right, so let's get Give no quarter. Get more Khajiit. This one can be counted upon. Now, it's wax because it's an odd number of turns. It's turn 3. So I think we're going to ring this out. Ring even though we're at 4 magicka. Still turn 3. So give another creature plus 2 in hand Go plus on. 2 plus 2. To we're going to bump that up to a 2/4. Now, put we're that down in front. Killing you will make an excellent story. Now this gets power when he breaks our runes, so we need to make sure that doesn't happen. Nothing Let's stop 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 stop. Stop. And since I can't save the runes, I can murder him. I think we're going to use our last charge of our ring here. I smell I'm going to play these out first, because I'm not going to break this citizen. rune. Give no quarter. Just in this case he would hit a prophecy. But now I can send this recruit over here to deal with stuff over here. Where they've got one helm. By the first floor. Beautiful prophecy. You won't escape alive. Their defenses will and we've got a crushing blow to deal with that. Only three health, so no reason to go they all crazy and use jab. Back. Oh, but you're putting that up. Alright. Ooh. We've got health. I think we play the mercenary captain here. Nothing like a good battle. And I already made a mistake. I should have pilfered first to have one extra recruit. We don't play flawlessly here, no. but we have We're fun. Wrong place for a midnight one stroll. Stroll first. This one can be Let's get our drains in. For a There's the fabled prophecy we were worried about. It's javelin. Barrow Stalker's now dead, but it's fine. You owe all of your dead meet your dead. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We're still looking at exactly lethal. I'll break your spirit. Give no quarter. This one can be counted upon. I'll break your spirit. Nothing will stop Kajna. And rock to the oh, bottle to the face. Easy. So I'm glad we took that uh, Rebel Warden. One cost pilfer. That helped out a lot during that game. 
challenger pick. All right, so there's a cog collector, which is fun but basically useless. Apex Predator has some potential use in this deck, or Dark Seducer, which is extremely good, has guard drain, and when they trade into it, you get the health back. A Easy pick. Triumphs. What challenge awaits next? Let's find out. We've got a lot of guards. Let's take a look at Monk. If this gets super long, I'll either speed it up and post, or we'll just kind of skip through to the end so we can see the reward screen. Or I'll cut it into two videos. That anything can happen in the arena, but this time I really mean it. So I said we could skip. We're not skipping this. So we each start with a Wabajack. Wabajack, legendary support. Transform a creature into a random creature. Anything from a sweet roll to an Alduin. So we're going to start putting out a Barrow Stalker Guard. The now the strategy the for Wabajack is to be the last person to use the Wabajack. So our opponent transforms. There's the sweet roll. Wrong place for a midnight scroll. Because he's not likely to damage us, we're just going to go ahead and get our tunes contemplation out. And there's no reason to wabajack. Mark Water Goblin. Well, we had success with this earlier. And you know what? We might actually start using some of our Wabbitack charges on the random. Random little dudes we get. Alright, Rebel Warden. What are you bringing home today? You say it's a kitty recruit. It was actually a Dwarven Ballista. Okay, I mean, that's basically a cat. Wrong place for a midnight stroll. Because he's got Pilfer up, I'm just going to guard in both lanes so that he can't charge hit face. Our Dwarven Ballista is actually a Gardener of Swords. Well, we do have items. So that's not the worst thing of all times. How many creatures do I have in here? One. That's a problem, because bone armor allows me to consume. So we'll probably not use bone armor. Wrong place for a midnight stroll. Give no quarter. This one can be counted upon. All right, this cat is Legate Rike. Whenever you summon an Imperial, summon a 1-1 Imperial Grunt in the other lane. We're getting much better Wabajack pulls than he was. What turn is this? Wax and Drain? No, I need you for card draw, so we're going to wait a turn. Khajiit will find a way in. Mm, I'd rather you not find a way in. Full disclosure. We're going to trust in Valenwood Sentry to hold. I do need somebody to be dead, though. Debunk the grass. So I think Legate Rick A is going to go face. And I want card draw, so we're going to play this here. And we're going to play Bone Armor over here. So the first one here, consume to gain the creature's health. Going to add four health to that guard. We're going to add two health to our uh, gardener there. Give no quarter. This one can be counted upon. Do not. Yeah, I don't really feel like breaking a rune. We'll save our last Wabajack charge. All right, still trades over here. This is Do why you guard both lanes versus Monk. Oh hi, uh, steal a sweet roll. Seven five is just asking for a stolen sweet roll. Give no quarter. This one can be counted upon. This one will be going. Do not yeah. travel this one. Useful. Nothing will stop Kajit. the grass. All right, we finally hit a prophecy. If 
Bye, Gardner. Someone steal your sweet roll again. And find Tazcad for lethal. Deal one damage. Oh, I wish I had done that before. Alright, you two drain. Clear your mind. Reflect your flaws. How can I do this? You... This one will be going. Yes. No yes. Just letting Rebel Warden. I mean, she summoned Ayla, Rick A, a Dwarven Ballista. Good person. Hey guys, uh, Future Prook here, coming to interject at this point and say that uh, the video we recorded for this tutorial series ran a little long, so we're going to go ahead, put in a cut here, and we'll see you in the next episode. It should be posted shortly thereafter, after our um, potato internet has finished uploading it to YouTube. Thanks, see you there.